What is going on everyone? Leon checking in. And today we're here to talk about how to take a web page and put it into your Chrome OS apps tray or onto your Chrome OS toolbar. Now the reason I'm making this video is I've got to be honest here. I said something in my last video that was not correct at all and I found out it was not correct literally probably a few hours after I had posted that video. And the thing that I said in it was that you can't put a web page in the Chrome OS apps tray or on the Chrome OS toolbar. So this video here is going to be kind of an apology for saying that because first of all, it's not true. You can put a web page into the Chrome OS apps tray and onto the Chrome OS toolbar. The next thing is really this channel is about accurate, correct information. So we have to address this as fast as possible for all the viewers out there. And then the other thing is this is something for me to learn from too. And it just goes to show you that I don't know everything. So instead of explaining exactly how the whole thing went in detail, what I said wrong, I'm just gonna go ahead and play the clip and then we're gonna show you how to actually do what I said couldn't be done. And we're all just gonna learn from it and it's gonna be beautiful. So with that being said, let's go ahead, let's get into it. But the other thing to consider is I can't even just put messages.android.com shortcut on the Chrome OS home screen. I can't drag it down to the bar at the bottom. So we're going to start things off by putting in the website that we would like to add to the toolbar. And in this case, it's going to be messages.android.com. Then we'll go ahead and hit the enter button and this will bring us to the website. Now we're going to click the hamburger menu in the top right hand corner or that's going to be the menu with the three dots. And then we're going to go ahead and click on create shortcut. The next step is to name your shortcut and you want to keep it simple and I'll show you why in a minute but we're just going to name this messages and then we'll hit create. Then we can go ahead and minimize the Chrome browser. Now we can go ahead and swipe up on the screen here and as you can see we're going to have our messages shortcut and it actually looks like an app. Not only is it going to show up in the app tray here but it's also going to show up on our toolbar. Now from here we can click and hold on it and we can drag it anywhere along our toolbar that we would like to. And then we'll just let it go. Now when we go ahead and click on it, it's actually going to take us directly to the website. And this is what you call a progressive web app. It kind of acts like an application, but it's on the internet. Now we're going to go ahead and show you why you want to keep the name short for your shortcut. So we're going to just do this over again, create a shortcut, and we'll just leave it as messages for web and go ahead and create that. We'll go ahead and minimize the browser again. And then we'll swipe up on the screen here to go to our apps tray. And as you can see, when we have a longer title, you can't necessarily read the whole title, which is why we want to keep the name for the shortcut very short. Okay, so now that you know how to do this, I wanted to also share this idea because what I mentioned in the last video was that the messages.android.com website wasn't all that great because it actually wasn't easily accessible. Google is known for doing these things where they don't make things as simple minded as possible, as straightforward as possible. And they leave a lot of techie people like ourselves wondering like, what the heck were they thinking? So add in messages.android.com to the Chrome OS apps tray or to the Chrome OS toolbar is kind of like having a messaging app, like an actual app on the Chrome OS so it's easily accessible, kind of like the way that it should have been done originally. But Google kind of makes you do these things. Now the thing that's fascinating about messages.android.com that I wanna talk about here is that it is a progressive web app. And what that means is when you do open it, it behaves just like an app that's stored locally on a device such as a Chromebook or on an Android phone. However, when you go to open it, it's located on the internet. Now this opens up a great possibility for the future of devices when you think about it, because if we have these progressive web apps, what that means is that the app data and all the app functions are gonna be stored online 
and not on the device. So what this means is there's going to be less of a need for storage on devices so we can actually focus on making them smaller and also lighter. So don't be surprised if in the future this is a direction that we're going to go with progressive web apps being the new thing versus actual apps located locally. But when it comes down to it, progressive web apps are a really cool direction that we're going in. My only concern is if everything is stored online, is the goal to eventually have mobile data be more affordable and more abundant. Because if we're storing everything online to avoid storing it locally so we can make our devices smaller and lighter, then we got to make some progress in the mobile data territory. So anyways, as we wrap up this video, I do want to let people know, again, sorry for the misleading information in the last video, and I hope that this cleared it up. So that is pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, as always, drop those below. I always love to read the comments, and replying is the least I can do. I always want to recognize everyone, because with the YouTube channel, I realize people don't have to watch and I just find it amazing that I could be so passionate about something and share it with the world and people are watching, they're liking, they're commenting, they're subscribing and it just really means a lot because all of this means so very much to me. Also if you can I did start a Patreon webpage and Patreon is a place for content creators like myself to go where we post our content and information about ourselves in the hopes that our patrons or viewers such as you will support us so we can continue to put out this great content. So I'm going to try to link that in the description below, but also I'm going to try to throw a link in the video here in the corner if YouTube does allow me to do so. And if you can, hit that subscribe button. Of course, the reason why we're talking about Patreon is because these videos, they do take money and they also take time. We put a lot of time into these videos, doing the research and trying to create content that's correct and will help people out. And until next time, Leon checking out.